Okay, so this is EWIT Lesson 1.2 Lab. Um, we've already discussed the um, what a circuit is. We've talked about what a circuit is. Um, so we know that it's just a continuous pathway um, where electrical charge can flow through it. Um, we have read about amateurs which measure electric currents in amps. Um, we've briefly talked about voltmeters, which measure voltage uh, in volts. So now we're actually going to create a circuit, and you're going to determine what the amps are because we're going to be using an amateur today. So the way that you can tell the difference is in an amateur, it's in milliamps. If it was a voltmeter, it would have a V right here, but it's basically set up the same way. You have your negative end and your positive end. And then you have your scale. So what we're going to do um, is we're first going to talk about all of these parts and then we're going to set up the circuit. So this right here is your switch. Um, we know that if it's closed, that means your circuit can flow through it. If it's open, then it's an open circuit and your current cannot flow through it. Now you do have a positive end and a negative end. Um, you have two negative ends and a positive end. These are called our rear wires. These ends are called alligator clips. This is your battery holder. If you'll notice, there's a positive end and a negative end, which corresponds to your D volt battery, where there is a positive end and a negative end. So we're gonna put this in there. The negative end goes in the negative end and the positive end into the positive end, and it just sits in there like that. And it allows the current that will eventually set up to flow through it, but it allows some of that electrical charge to come out into these metal brackets that you can connect these alligator clips to. So you just kind of pull it out and clip it on. Then we have a light bulb and a light bulb holder. So the light bulb just screws down into the light bulb holder. And on the very end of this light bulb, there's a metal tip and it will touch against this metal tip on your light bulb holder, which will allow for the electrical charge to flow through. And it just sits inside the holder. And sometimes they're kind of difficult to get in, um, but you just have to kind of keep working with it until you make sure the end of that light bulb is touching the middle part. All right, so we're gonna set up the current now. It's very, very important that you have the right charge flowing through your current the right direction or it's going to completely mess up. So we're going to start on the positive end. So you just take your alligator clip and clip it on the inside and outside of your positive end of your amp meter. So you can see half of it is going inside the positive end and then the other half is going on the outside. Then we're going to determine what our positive end of our battery is. So right here's the positive end. So we've got positive going to positive. So we're going to clip it onto the metal bracket. We're going to get another alligator clip and we're going to go from the negative end and we're going to go to the light bulb. And you're just going to clip it onto one of the middle plates. So as long as it's touching a, um, a conductor, then we're able to use the electrical flow that goes through it. Then we're going to clip it to the other end. So my alligator clip came off my battery. You just got to kind of play with this to make sure that everything's holding together. So I've got this free end of the wire. So you can see I've got my battery or my light bulb hooked up to my battery. And then we're going to go to the positive end because remember we're still working with the positive end. Then we're going to go to the negative end. And we're going to keep make sure my switch is still open. We don't want to close switch while we're start opening or closing electrical flows. So then I attach it to my negative end of my ammeter and I close the circuit. So here is the flow. And you can see the light bulb is shining. So you know that your circuit's working as well as your ammeter. It shows you exactly how many milliamps you have. So in your paper, it asks you, um, it says examine the ammeter table right, um, as you read Measure the current in the unit in, in amps. All right, so this is in milliamps. So you're going to have to use what you know about converting units 
and go from milli to your base unit. So amps are going to be your base unit. So you're going to have to move that decimal, remember? Now, um, later it asks you about the scale. So you'll discuss about the scale. And you can see right here, we're going up by hundreds. So you've got 0 to 100, and then 100 to 200, 200, 300, 300 to 400, 400, 500. So you're going up by 100 milliamps. But then these small tick marks, you've got a 50 right here. So we're going to be going up by tens. So your scale is going up by tens. So yes, the large hash marks are by hundreds. We have to take into consideration the small tick marks. So you're going 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So your scale is by tens in milliamps. Now, we need to um, determine what do you think would happen if we switched these connections. So let's say that we went from, we started... I'm going to open my switch. Always open your switch and close your switch before you touch the wires. So I'm going, and I know this is a jumbled mess. I'm working with a very small space. So I'm going to switch the connection. So instead of starting at positive and going to the positive end of the battery, I'm going to start at the negative end. And I'm going to end at the positive end. And let's see what happens. So on your milliamps, it goes to the negatives. So that just shows you that you've hooked up your circuit incorrectly. If it ever goes below zero, that means that somewhere in your circuit, your charges have been flipped and it will go to the negative. If you have a correct circuit, that means your circuit's going to go up to the positive. Um, so then the last question says, do you think the amount of current flowing through the emitter is the same as the amount of current in the light bulb? Write your answer and explain your reasoning. So use what you know about um, current and about charge and determine if you think that the flow that's coming through the battery that goes to the light bulb, that goes to the switch, that goes to the emitter is the exact same. If yes, explain your answer. And if no, explain your answer. And if you have any questions about this, please message me.